Does everybody remember that story from back in 2005 about the pair of Japanese soldiers who emerged at the age of 80 from some jungle deep in the Philippines? They were originally stationed there during the Second World War, 60 years prior, but despite the fact that Hirohito actually surrendered in August of 1945, these stupid fuckers were still fighting, even though they'd already lost. Didn't you get the memo? Dear viewers, I present the People's Vote, which, seeing as though their MO appears to be ignoring the results of a vote by the people, by calling for an end to Brexit, has to be the most ironic name in living memory, and sort of like whichever dickhead decided to put an S in the word lisp, you sort of feel like they're just taking the Michael at this point. But that's got to be a straw man, Jacob. You're misrepresenting them. They can't possibly deny the results of the 2016 democratic referendum on Britain's membership of the EU. You're having us on. We are not opposing or calling for a second referendum. The referendum, the people decided that we should leave the European Union. And um, we respect that decision. You see, maybe if you just button it for five seconds and let them explain themselves, you wouldn't get your damn knickers in a twist over nothing. The uh, campaign for the people's vote is simply requesting that we have another chance to consider what the terms of this divorce are going to be. And so your idea is that when Theresa May comes back to the House of Commons and says, this is fundamentally the deal that I have got, that deal should be voted upon by everybody in the UK, yes or no? Exactly. Oh, maybe I do have them wrong. Uh, sorry, guys. I, I seem to have completely misrepresented what this group's about. What happens if they say no? Well, <laughs> I, I don't know how they would deal with that, but we would simply stay in the union. That's what that vote would mean. Aha! I got you, you snake in the grass! I found you out! We would simply stay in the union. That's what that vote would mean. Yep, they're trying to stop Brexit. And this is just the latest attempt, to be honest. We had Gina Miller's outfit, Best for Britain, parading around this time last year. The House of Lords are currently playing silly buggers over the government's withdrawal bill. Romaniacs are relentless. It reminds me, there's a great bit towards the end of the movie Hot Fuzz, where Simon Pegg, who's been chasing the villain of the piece on screen for the last 60 minutes, right? I mean, there's been explosions, gunfights, car chases, death, maiming, fucking mayhem. Finally catches up to the guy, and he still won't give up. <laughs> Isn't that right, Danny? Stay back! Pack it in, Frank, you silly bastard! I mean, it's just sad after a while, you know? Can't we accept the decision that was reached and make the most of the situation? Apparently not. Apparently not. Well, let's hear them out, I guess. <laughs> Free speech and all that. <laughs> Would you please welcome Anna Subri, Conservative MP and former Cabinet Minister, Chika Amuna, Labour MP, Former Business Secretary, Leila Moran, Lib Dem MP, Shadow Education Spokeswoman, and the co-leader of the Green Party, Caroline Lucas. You on? For the first time ever, I think in any country's history, I actually have a government that said to people, we're about to embark upon a course in other words, a set of Brexit negotiations, which on whichever way you cut it, whatever deal comes out, you, you, your children, your grandchildren, will actually be less prosperous than you are now. And this is really bad and serious stuff. 
Yeah, I don't think throwing red meat to the lions of the Remain side is really going to advance the argument very far, Anna. After all, when polled, people who voted to leave the EU did so out of a belief in the principle that decisions about the UK should be taken in the UK, the chance to regain control over the country's immigration policy, and the illegitimacy of an ever-expanding continental superstate. When merely 5% of Brexiteers cite the economy as the primary motivator behind their decision, I guess what they're saying to you, Anna, is all those other things I just mentioned, they aren't actually for sale. I mean, perhaps you are only capable of viewing the country as if it were one giant corporation, Great Britain PLC, with a balance sheet and shareholders to appease, but many of us regard it as a society, as a community of people based on a common history, a shared set of values, and we aren't prepared to just bargain all of that away for a fiver and a cheap gold watch. Now, having said all of that, the particular Treasury report you're referring to, which does claim that the UK will be financially worse off for the first 15 years after Brexit, should be taken with a barrel of salt, in my opinion. A barrel of it. You need to look at the record of these forecasters. Bear, bear in mind that the Treasury's official forecast said that simply a vote to leave the European Union would lead to an increase in unemployment by 500 to 800 thousand. And the Bank of England's forecasts that David Davis went through at the recent meeting of the exiting the European Union a Select Committee after the vote to leave for the immediate impact were wrong on every single count. Um, and this is a forecast for 15 years based on a, ver a variety of assumptions that have proved wrong in the past. Uh, other economists, such as Patrick Minford and his group at um, Cardiff University, have come up with very different forecasts because what matters are the policies that you implement. And if the UK is to open its market to move to free trade, to remove tariff and non-tariff barriers, reducing the cost of food, clothing and footwear, then there's a huge opportunity for economic growth and not a lower rate of growth. The other issue for me is I, I just think ultimately this... I think people find cross-party working refreshing. Yeah. I think this heart, whole, you know, punch and judy ultra-tribal, left-right, opposed for the sake of opposing kind of politics. That is over, and Westminster hasn't caught up yet. And so there's a big, bigger reason to do this cross-party too. You're the ones making waves right now. This is such nonsense. Westminster was practically unanimous in its desire to remain. The parties were united, my friend. It was the people who said no dice. The difference now Chucker, is the majority of MPs, to their credit, have accepted the result and are trying to get on with implementing the will of the nation. You, on the other hand, are so attached to punch and duty politics that you want to hop in a time machine and resurrect a dead argument when everybody else is struggling with the reality that's in front of them. And there does seem to be an element of Brexit fatigue out there. How do these people combat that when they're out there on the streets? Oh, my God, tell me about it. Does anyone <laughs> else just, just want to make this stop? Yeah. And actually, Andy, you said earlier you had a slogan. I've got one. I think when we get our people's vote, that should be our slogan. Just make it stop. <laughs> We're done. We're bored. The Liberal Democrats, ladies and gentlemen, they're bored. So why are you here? Not the best spokesman for the cause, are you? On the contrary, she is part of the problem that the questioner was asking her to solve. <laughs> what? Come here. Hey. You're a waste of space. Oh! <laughs> and for young people in particular, if I can just say that I think it's been so extraordinary and, and so worrying to see the way in which essentially Brexit is going to close down the opportunities for young people. I think we should be celebrating in particular freedom of movement, the right to travel and to study. The right 
to study, to travel, to live and to love and to learn in 27 other countries is an absolutely precious and wonderful gift. We should be celebrating it, not closing it down. Okay, all of that is still possible. You are hysterical. What, do you think that if I want to live and work in France after March 2019, that's no longer an option? They're going to be like, sorry, I know you speak French. Uh, will bring XYZ benefits to the French economy and are a person of good moral character, but we no longer share one government. So piss off, I guess. <laughs> Caroline, I live and work in Hong Kong currently. Hong Kong isn't a member of the European Union. How did I get here? Call the police. I must have broken in. Everyone knows. Immigration is only possible if borders don't exist. And you keep bleating this line. Freedom of movement is such a wonderful thing. What about all the times that it isn't? Do they moderate your devotion to the concept even slightly? I mean, look, we saw that horrendous lorry uh, crashing into the Christmas market in Berlin mm. just before Christmas. The person driving that lorry uh, had served a prison sentence in Italy through the European Union's free movement. He'd got to Germany, uh, he'd applied for asylum, for refugee status, and been refused, but hadn't been removed. And then, when he was the most wanted man in the whole of Europe, he was able to cross the border into France and into Italy when he was finally caught in Milan. So I think the uh, public right across Europe are furious that the Schengen free movement area doesn't just mean the free movement of good people, it means the free movement of bad people, Kalashnikovs, explosives and everything else. And they want action. And at last, what we're seeing from Mrs Merkel is some recognition that it is not racist, it is not inflammatory, it is not wrong to recognise that we have a problem. However, let's just remember, she was the person who invited into yeah. Germany over a million people without being able to security check a single one of them. We have the basic, democratic, patriotic, common sense right as the people of this greatest ever country to make sure we are getting what we're promised. That's why you, me, all 65 million of us need to demand a people's vote. Thank you. Jesus, have you been living in a cave? We had the people's vote. We were promised an exit from the EU. I mean, what do you want? Best of three? This isn't a fucking coin toss or a game of rock, paper, scissors, guy. Referendums cost hundreds of millions of pounds. Never mind the referendum. We just had a general election wherein the Conservatives were victorious, standing on a manifesto to take Britain out of the single market and the customs union. You, you just sound like a child at this point, who, upon discovering that the rest of the playground have decided to play football instead of hockey, is so pissed that he's going to spend the entire game trying to kick the ball into the road. Because of Brexit, we're becoming a less and less attractive career destination for European healthcare professionals. In fact, this year, in my hospital, we failed to get a single applicant for a consultant neurology post, and I expect that will continue and will get worse. I call bullshit. Now, obviously, I don't work in this man's hospital or anything, but official statistics show that the number of European workers has increased across the National Health Service overall, post-referendum, and also I'm very weary of people who, after spending the last decade plus citing lack of government funding as an explanation for failings in public services, now want to lay all of the blame at the feet of Brexit. I smell a rat, if I'm perfectly frank. There could be any number of reasons why this man in this clinic can't find a consultant. I seriously doubt that Brexit is one of them. More people have come to work in the NHS from the EU uh, in the last year than, than before the uh, Brexit vote. Uh, that's not the, those are not the figures that I've seen. The, and I the, think the official the figures. Concern. The official figures. Well, 
the real concern, of course, is people who, whether or not people who are already here, the really experienced yeah. ones, are going to stay. And it needs to be people at the right grades. We've got uh, yeah, people the right, who yes. have lived here for years and who are absolutely, if they haven't mm. got family, for instance, are planning to leave because but they're they, not, they're uncertain about their Well, no, no, but that's silly. No, but they're, 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 they're I'm sorry, if they're, if they're that skilled and that educated and that professional and that useful to us, they would know that they're not going to be expected to leave and they're going to have the right to stay here. They know well, perfectly not well that there's not, I can assure you, they're, 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 I can, uh, hand on heart, there is not a single person anywhere in, in, in anywhere to do with the government of Brexit who thinks that anyone who's living here in the EU, who's living here illegally, is going to be expected to leave or want, or want asked to leave. It's a load of nonsense. Well, that's not the way they feel. Well, because then they should research more. The if these are, if well, these are such highly prized more, employees, the they'd have to, a cursory Google search research would tell them that they won't be asked to leave and they will have the legal right to stay here. A cursory Google search. If they can't be bothered and, and to do well that, they're probably not they much feel? use to us in the NHS, are they? I don't need to convince anyone in this room that Brexit will be a disaster, hurting the poorest, hitting our standing in the world, harming our long fought for rights and protections. But we need young people to step up and we want to. That's why I'm part of For Our Future's Sake, working with students across the UK to call for a people's vote on the Brexit deal and to show that Brexit isn't inevitable. What, are you planning a military coup? Or do we just keep voting until you win? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a stronger case of denial in my life. You just want to scream. And you, my friend, are responsible for delaying my rendezvous with Star Command. You are a toy! You weren't the real Buzz Lightyear. You're, a, uh, you're an action figure. You are a child's plaything. You are a sad, strange little man, and you have my pity. Farewell. Oh, yeah? Well, good riddance, you loony. It is not Jean-Luc Picard. It is not Charles Xavier who is standing here in front of you. Although can I, I can assure you that if they had had the opportunity to vote in, two, in the 2016 referendum, they would have voted <laughs> Remain! <laughs> and why? Because unity, a common cause, the well-being and fairness of society and debate were paramount to the beliefs of both these fictional characters. Needless to say, for these reasons, I have little doubt that they would today be backing the people's vote. No, I don't think so. Uh, for a start, I thought the Star Trek tagline was to boldly go where no man has gone before, not to stay put with our thumb up our ass while Brussels decides what we trade, who we trade it with and at what price. <laughs> Europe isn't the final frontier, Patrick. Sorry to disappoint. And are you really under the assumption that we don't want the things you just listed? The Leave side obviously are in favour of the well-being of society and of debate. We just don't think that the EU provides those things, okay? I mean, can you just try imagining that everyone you disagree with isn't a total twat? And then we might actually be able to communicate for a second. God, for a guy who can read minds, he's not very empathetic, is he? Here we go. So... Patrick, are you there? Yeah. Come. All right, let's have a look. We need to move back in a little bit. Hopefully, you, you won't be able to see yourself. <laughs> God, what a sad bunch of Muppets. Nigel Farage has probably got more charisma in his asshole than the entire stage of them. I mean, these are the people, really? <laughs> Not exactly the Justice League, are they? I mean, Christ. Patrick, here we go. And the MPs involved, I hope they're attending on their own time. Am I paying for this at any point? <laughs> Nupties. My Lords, a customs union is by definition a form of discrimination. Ricardo, Cobden, Gladstone, those great liberals would be spinning in their grave at the thought that their descendant party today uh, is in favour of uh, this form of trade discrimination. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The answer to growing protectionism in the world, my lords, is not to retreat inside a protectionist block of slow-growing countries that constitute just 10% of the world's future economic growth, but to seek free trade opportunities wherever we can find them. 
The answer is not to discriminate against African and Asian economies, but to be open to all. It is not to turn our back on the, our friends in the Commonwealth, eager to do trade deals with us in this week of all weeks. Not to yearn to keep a hold of nurse for fear of finding something worse. Not to embrace a model of harmonisation and identical regulation designed to prevent and extinguish innovation, but one of mutual recognition to learn how to achieve better ends by better means. Not to rely on a wall of protective tariffs to keep the world at bay, but to play to our strengths as a common law, English-speaking, scientifically advanced nation of shopkeepers and entrepreneurs. Not to be parochially regional, but to be ambitiously global. And not to listen to millionaire loveys and trekkies gathering in Camden. Yeah, yeah.